Hey guys, welcome back to Tommy Legends and once again thank you for stopping by. So this is part two of the Tommy Fighting Buggy, formerly known as a Super Champ. Um, so now we're going to um, finish it off cosmetically, fix the errors that the original builder made, get the electronics in it and um, basically get it completely box out or as much as I can and um, we'll get it ready for running. So let's get cracking. Right, so before we start, um, I just want to just quickly go through the running gear I'm going to use because um, I've just come up with uh, an idea. <laughs> so I've got this absolutely iconic Tamiya Radspec radio gear, which is absolutely stunning. Now this runs the um, Tamiya CPI unit. Now I'm only running a 540 in this car, so I'm going to test this full radio set out. I know it works. Um, so we've got the Radspec transmitter, the CPR P100. So that's got like, um, oh, from memory, I think it's about an 18, 19 turn limit on it, which is absolutely perfect for a 540. And we've got a Tamiya TPS um, 418 steering servo. So I just need to um, fit that. So I thought that's going to be pretty cool. Um, so let's get cracking with the car. So as I said, first up, what we know is wrong with it. The um, screws are the wrong way around in the fronts, which means the rears are wrong as well. So I need to take the wheels off and sort all the screws out. Um, I need to get this um, alloy top off, cut all the tie wraps off, take this meshing out and basically redo it. But while this is off, we're going to mask these struts up. We're going to mask the um, around these grills. Um, and the first job will be to um, paint these silver and paint these struts red. Then when that's drying, we'll get the driver unit out, we'll start putting that together and we'll paint that up. Um, and then we'll come back to this um, when it's dry and start mounting all this on properly. Uh, and in between that obviously we'll, um, as I said, get the wheels the, the wheels fit, fitted correctly and then we'll install this um, cool radio gear. So let's get cracking. <laughs> Right, so that's the basic shell. Um, I just need the knife just to trim some of the plastics up. But um, yeah, we'll mask this off and this will be red. Um, and we'll mask these grates off and that'll be the silver. So I've got um, silver paint and I've also got TS Tamiya 49. I haven't got a bottle of paint, so I'm just gonna spray some of this into the lid and I'll just paint it on with a brush, um, which will look fine and flesh color for the driver unit so we have the parts tree um, I think I'll have to check with the manual but I think the um, dashboard is just um, black um, and what we'll do is we'll we'll colour all this in black we'll give him black seat belts and I'll just do my normal thing where I use a marker so we'll go flesh colour for his face and then we'll do the edge of that helmet in black and also the rim in black and it always looks pretty cool and it takes seconds to do um, so that's everything we're going to do right now. I do have to find a, a spotlight because um, the cover was missing on one of them, which is unfortunate. But I've got a, a full brand new Tamiya driver set, which has spotlights in it. Now, they're not the same ones as these, um, but that won't matter. Um, they go on with self-tappers. So what I'll probably do is just leave these off, possibly. I'll see, if it, I'll see if they look identical, first of all. If they don't, I'll change them for the two new ones. Um, and we'll have to take that decal off and put it on the new one but again we'll see um, this meshing and now I've not looked at this but I'm a bit worried um, it's not going to fit but saying that those two are roughly the same size so anyway I'll need the manual for that so let's get the the paint side done um, and then we can have a look at the wheel Um, it's going to need a couple of coats with the state that this has gone on with the brush I should have um, spent the time masking it all off and just spraying it on but hey ho um, I think it'll put um, a second and a third coat possibly but not to worry um, I'll need a second coat on the silver but um, yeah that's cool I'm letting that dry so I've just painted the flesh colour on the driver's 
helmet. And quick tip for anyone who hates painting or the detail painting that I do. For the drivers, I always use marker pen. The only thing I paint on the drivers, unless the driver needs painting sort of a, a box art colour, um, I do the, I paint the flesh, but I use a Sharpie, um, or is it Sharpie marker, just to go around the edge of that helmet in black. And then when I put the helmet together, I go around this ridge in black as well. Um, dot his eyes, and that's that's him done. Um, and same again with marker, black on his seat belts. Um, I'm probably going to do a possibly a different colour on his gloves, I don't know. Um, I go around the edge of the driver with this and then I just use a big fat black marker and I colour all this in black. Um, it's crude but um, I'll be honest it looks it looks great when it's done. So um, it's a tip for anyone who's lazy like me. I'll, uh, I'll keep going back to the painting side of it, um, but it doesn't make for a good video. I've just gone around that with marker pen. Um, right, so we'll move on to the wheels and tyres. Um, I thought it'd just be a case of just changing the old screws over, but all the fronts appear to have the wrong, the wrong screws in, which is nice. Um, I'm not too sure what he's done. So on inspection, I've just noticed, if you can see here, he's not deburred the plastic. So that plastic's absolutely digging into that tyre. Same on that one, same on that one. So it's just as easy just to take all the screws out, strip the wheels, take the front and backs off. I'll leave the innards in, obviously, and um, we'll get all the screws matched up. Right. My apologies to whoever built it. I blamed you for using the wrong screws and you hadn't. Um, these are the short fronts and they're the long rears. You can see the difference here in sizes. He'd actually used the right screws. What he'd done was these these wheels go only go one way around, as I guess the majority of you'll know. It has this large standoff on this side and shallow one on this side. So he'd got these two the wrong way around. Um, not to worry, um, but as you can see, I've had to strip them all to deburr them because every wheel has got the plastic on it. So I'll get a craft knife out, we'll trim those and then we'll get them built back up. So I've just connected the radio gear up, um, just want to make sure I double check it's all working. But power to the transmitter, switch on, and you get that little thing that this CPI unit does. So the steering servo is working. And Excellent. So what I've so I've centered, I've, I've trimmed that off, and um, I'll now tidy this up. I'll cut this neater, and then we'll get the servo fitted, um, and then we'll get the top deck on, and we'll figure out the um, where the CPI unit's going to fit, and we'll mount the switch because we've got some screws, and we'll tidy the wiring up. So I thought this was interesting. So I just started to put the servo in. I slackened the mounts off. Um, look how close that is to the server. I'm getting a bit closer. Look at that. I've actually had to shave. If you can see it on this coupling here, I've actually shaved the the corner off because it's got it's on like a square. And I've just taken this little bit off. And now, because it was binding, it wouldn't turn. And now it's it's smooth. God, that's close, isn't it? Anyway, it's working now, so let's back the radio on. gear in. It's not the tidiest of wiring, but um, it'll do. Um, you've got to leave a little bit of slack. Oh, I'll put the clips on now, because obviously this tray has to lift up and out so you can get your battery in. So you need to leave a little bit of slack on your motor wires. Um, but anyway, it's... Um, oops. We have power switches down here. And we've got steering. And we have power. So, well chuffed with that. So we'll get the wheels on and then we'll um, finish the painting off. Right, um, so we've now painted the black onto the spotlights, put the new decals on so they're, they're finished. Driver unit's finished, steering wheel glued on, basic detail on it, but it looks fine. I've 
cut these out best I can. Um, if one of them is a bit short and crinkled, so I'm going to have to straighten it out. But they're next to put on. I did the second set of spotlights, painted them black, changed the decals over so they look better. I also painted the silver grills on both sides, so that looks good. And I got sick of trying to paint this, so I masked, masked it all and I've sprayed it. Um, it's not great, but it's it's sort of better than it uh, it was brushed. So it's starting to come alive just to get this uh, driver unit back in it now um, and get the roof. On once the netting's in and then she's gonna be almost done and that's the shell done and I've got to be honest it's one of those Tamiya moments where you start putting the bits on and it's like oh this doesn't look good but it actually does it looks pretty cool um, that red sections come out of treat um, I had to use bigger tie wraps than unfortunately they, I should have done I don't have any of the small Tammy ones left but the uh, driver unit looks great to be honest uh, I got away with the netting as well on this side, just, it's a little bit short on the inside, but you can't tell, and it's stuck down with tape, I don't know if you can see that on the inside, you cut like two flaps around, so I've done that and the driver just glows in, um, but that doesn't look too bad at all, I've got a little bit of trimming, I'll just get a knife and just cut those little bits off so it looks better, but um, yeah, let's get it on the car, and she's done, looks pretty cool. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that, how that's come out. Next thing is when I run her. I've tried to check as many screws as I can, but I can tell the way it's been built, it could have other things that fall off as we run it. Which is not cool, but uh, yeah, it looks good. And she's done. Um, and as I say, looks absolutely awesome. Well chuffed with that. I'm struggling here to hold this up, the thing's a tank, it's a two arm job for this. Anyway, she's ready for running, so obviously we've got her as box art as we can and we've got the iconic vintage Tamiya Adspec two channel radio gear in there, in gear in there with the CPR receiver electronic speed combined unit, so that's going to be cool to see how that, that old girl runs. Um, so that's it, um, thank you for watching part two. Um, I've learned a lot working on this car, of, of how this particular chassis goes together. Very interesting build and I can see why it is so iconic. Um, I would be tempted to actually get a set of um, Super Champ reproduction decals from MCI Racing to be honest. Because um, I was looking at the differences in how it looks and um, I, I th I, yeah, I think if I, if I was going to do it again, and you know, I was gonna spend a bit more money on it, I would probably take these decals off, which sounds crazy, I know, um, and actually spray the the correct colour. I mean, this is not a million miles away, but spray the body correctly, and then get some high gloss Super Champ decals just to finish it off. Because I don't imagine, and this is just my opinion, I don't imagine you run these cars a lot. Um, I know there's thousands of them about, and, and a lot get used, but I generally think, that this car, you have a little bit of fun with it, you know, it's not awesome handling or anything like that. It's, as I say, it's a tank and it, it possibly goes on a shelf because it's certainly a looker. Um, anyway, um, thanks for watching. Um, that's the end of part two. So, once again, um, if you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us, um, that would be much appreciated. And as always, guys, happy assing.